Hello and welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to be doing lesson 1-4 and we're going to be talking about perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. Now you guys in previous classes have talked about perimeter and area so we're going to fly through some of this stuff. I will put formulas on here for you. You can copy them down in your notes so you have something to refer back to. Um, if you don't need it because you remember all this stuff, then that's fine too. But it is certainly okay to pause the video at any point in time and copy down any screens that you need because I'm just going to kind of fly through some of this. All right, so what is a polygon? So think in your heads, what do you think a polygon is? So there's some characteristics that we always must use when we're talking about a polygon. So one of those things is that it is a closed figure. It cannot be open. All of the sides need to meet. It is formed by three or more line segments, which we call sides. And each side intersects another side at what we call a vertex. So it must be closed, formed by three or more line segments, and each side intersects another side at a vertex. How do we name a polygon? We name a polygon by listing the vertices in consecutive order. Most people will start like here and then they'll go clockwise all the way around naming the points. Some people like to go counterclockwise, so we could name this polygon A, B, C, D, E. We cannot go from A to C, then D, then B, then E. So once you say a point, so if you start with B, then you could go B, C, D, E, A. Typically, we have a tendency to name a polygon alphabetically, so typically we would start with A. Remember, if you're taking notes or when you're taking notes, this title needs to be at the top. That is going to be one point for in your five points when we collect notes. So make sure you have this title at the top. Remember, you can always stop and pause the video and then go on if you need more time. All right, so polygons. You guys have probably already seen this chart numerous times. Again, if you need to stop it and then get this written, you certainly can. But most of you probably already know that a three-sided figure is a triangle, a four-sided is a quadrilateral, five is a pentagon, six is a hexagon. A lot of times I used to get six and seven mixed up, but remember six has the X in it and hex has the X in it. So that's how I would keep six and hexagon together. Seven is a heptagon, eight is your octagon, which you're familiar with, that you see when you're riding in a car is your stop sign. The nine-sided figure is a nonagon, 10-sided figure is a decagon, 12-sided is a dodecagon, and anything that doesn't have a specific name, so if we ever have an 11-sided figure, we would just call it an 11-gon, a 15-gon, a 16-gon. So the only ones that have specific names are the ones listed here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and a 12-sided figure. Now, from now on, from this day, sometimes they're going to ask you, and on a test I would not be able to answer a question, but they'll say, find the area of an octagon. So if we're doing this in January, you can't come up to me and say, oh, Miss Talk, how many sides does an octagon have again? So just remember, from this day forward, all of these sides, you need to know what their names are. And a lot of times they're not going to say an eight-sided figure. They will say octagon. All right, convex or concave. Sometimes you will hear these terms in science. Convex. No line contains a side of the polygon, contains a point in the interior of the polygon. So something like this versus something like this. Okay, if I were to take and I follow the side and I follow the side and I follow a side, none of those lines, whoops, unless you draw errantly like I just did, none of those sides have points on the interior. Whereas if I draw this line, it will have points on the interior. Some other people say if you connect vertices, 
to do two sides if there's a point on the interior then that is concave so these are con this would be your convex and this is your concave when it looked like this so when you connect two connected vertices you can't have something on the inside so convex would be this side and concave is this all right so here's some samples that we have and we're going to go through and we are going to name them and we're going to say whether they're convex or concave and if they are actually a polygon or not so this first one right here is that a polygon is it closed made up of segments and every point connects here so we've got one two three four five six seven eight so this is an octagon and it is convex polygon octagon convex all right the second figure right here is this a polygon and no it is not because it is not closed Number three here, is this a polygon? Yes, it is a polygon because it is closed. It's got one, two, three, four sides. So a four-sided figure is a quadrilateral, and this one is convex. All right, this four-sided figure looks like they're all made up of segments. You can see the more segments we get, the more it's looking like a circle, but this is a polygon. It is closed, and if we are going to name this, we'd have to count up all of the sides here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is going to be a 16 gone. All right, this one, is it a polygon? Yes, it is. Oh, and this one's convex. Sorry, I almost forgot convex so we've got one two three four five sides so this is a pentagon and this one is concave concave when I have this side those points go in the interior these points right here so that is concave all right, and this last figure that we have here, I think that's the sixth figure, is this a polygon? And the answer would be no, because this side right here is curved, so this is not a polygon. All right, moving on. So talking about some different formulas that we have here. So again, if you know these formulas, you don't have to put them in your notes, but if you don't remember what they are, then you probably want to have a formula sheet that you can get to fairly quickie, quickly so that if you need to, you can find these formulas. So the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Some people write it base times height divided by two. That's the same thing rectangle parallelogram both of them are going to be base times height some people still say length times width but it's still the same thing the two sides need to be perpendicular to each other so if we're doing a parallelogram we're not going to use the sides you're going to use the segment that comes down and is perpendicular so this right here is what your height would be not the side length all right, the area of a square, some of you are going to use that same thing. You're just going to say base times height. But remember, if we're talking about a square, if this side is side, this is a side, this is a side, this is a side, all the sides are the same. So for finding the area, we're going to say side squared. A trapezoid is going to be one half times the height of base one plus base two. So a trapezoid has one set of parallel sides. This is base one, this is base two, and again, this height always has to be perpendicular. So we're not gonna use the sides. We use a segment that is perpendicular to both, so this is what your height would be. Okay, all of those formulas are your area. And really, there's no technical formula that you need to use for all your perimeters. Basically, your perimeter is just going to add up all the sides. So the perimeter for a triangle is going to be first side plus second side plus third side. 
For a rectangle, there are some different ways you could do it because if you're talking about a rectangle or a parallelogram, these two sides are going to be the same length. So sometimes they'll say 2B plus 2H because we're taking two bases plus two heights. For squares, sometimes they're just going to say there's a side, but we have four of them, so we're going to say 4S. And for a trapezoid, you would just add up all of your sides because none of them are more than likely the same length. Okay? All right, so have those formulas in the back of your head here. So this first one, we're going to find the perimeter of this triangle ABC. Now, you could just find the distance of all three. So you could go AB, and you can use your distance formula and find the length of that. You can find the length of AC and find the length of that. And then we have a third side, BC, and we can find the length of that by using your distance formula. Okay, some people like to graph it first to help them get a visual, so we're going to do that. So A is at negative 2, 1, 2, 3. So here's point A. Point B is at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So B is down here at 3, negative 3. And C is at negative 2, 1, 2, 3. So here's where C is at. Now, when I notice, when I draw this line from A to C, that was exactly vertical. And when I draw the line from A to B, it's going across diagonal. And from C to B, it is exactly horizontal. So technically now, when I'm finding the length, so this one right here from A to C, because it is exactly vertical, you can really just count. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six units long. So we know that the length of AC is six. Well, I also need to find the length of BC. So let me count that. One, two, three, four, five. This length is five. Now, to find the length of AB, I am actually going to have to use my distance formula. So that distance formula thing that I set up over here, we're going to actually have to use. All right, so let me see here. Finding the distance from A to B, so these first two points here. We're going to take those x values, which we had done last week, so negative 2 minus 3 quantity squared, plus take now the y values, which is going to be 3 minus a negative 3 quantity squared. So negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5. 3 minus a negative 3 is going to be 6. So it looks like we have negative 5 squared is 25. And 6 squared is 36. So it looks like, what, 6 plus 5 is 11, 3, 4, 5. So it looks like we have the square root of 61 here. And the square root of 61, if I am estimating correctly, is going to come out to be about 7.8. All right, to now find the perimeter, we're going to have to add up all three sides. So we're going to add up AC, which is 6, plus CB, which is 5, plus AB, which we found out was 7.8. So if we add up all three of those sides here, it looks like we're going to get something like, what's that, 1118.8, and I don't see any labels here, so I'm just going to say units. All right, so there's finding your perimeter. Now, if we're going to find the area, and we can just use this same thing, so finding the area of this triangle, it's going to be 1 half base times height. So one half, and we're lucky here because our base and our height on this triangle, they're already perpendicular. So we can do one half times six times five. So one half of six is three, three times five is 15. So the area is going to be 15 units squared. Okay, so sometimes when we're finding our distances here, if things are exactly vertical or horizontal, we can just add or count the sides there. And sometimes when they're diagonal, like this AB was, then we are going to have to actually use the distance formula. All right, good luck on your homework.